What's happening YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Life of a Job in Plumber. We've got three videos, three different jobs in for today. All very interesting. I enjoy I enjoyed editing this one when there's when there's something a little bit different um and you you rectify the issue. I enjoy I really enjoyed this one. So hopefully you will too. And if you do, please give this video a big thumbs up. Apparently it helps push the video out to the wider audience. I don't know how true it is. So does commenting, apparently. And um, subscribing, well, it's free for you to do that. All that it means is you'll be, no well, you won't be notified. You have to ring the little bell on my homepage for you to get notified of a video that goes live. But if you subscribe, when you click on your subscriptions on your YouTube app, it'll just come up with my upload. So you won't ever miss one. There's loads of people that, when I last said about begging for people to subscribe, there was actually quite a few people what said I didn't even realise I didn't subscribe. So just make sure you check if you want to be subscribed anyway. Just make sure you check that you have done because the bigger the amount of subscribers, the more chance of me getting more views. It gets pushed out there to the wider audience, channel grows inspires me to make more content and yada 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 this seems to be all us uh content creators talk about is channel growth which is it's ultimately that's what it boils down to if the channel channel grows it, it encourages you to make more videos and yeah it makes it worthwhile because trust me the money that you get paid off youtube well, at this stage that I'm on, what is it, five five thousand subs? No worth it. However, there is going to be a video coming up very shortly of how much money I earned off YouTube in twelve months since becoming monetized. That'll make an interesting watch for some of you. If you think about getting into it, if you're just curious about how much you can make on YouTube, but I'm pretty sure a lot of you will be surprised find out how much or little it actually is anyway that's enough rambling it's nearly two minutes 30 seconds of me rambling let's get into the video thanks for watching so this one i filmed as a short and i put it out on youtube poor hot water flow rate on this tap now waterfall taps are not the best of, most of the time anyway, but this one is only producing three litres a minute. Last time I came, it was blockage in the flexes. Check out my short if you've not seen it. But the customer's it's got worse again. So the customer's got herself a new tap, not a waterfall one this time. It's got new flexes and stuff, but it's all in the other room. So yeah, we'll see if this will perform any better. Hardest part is always figuring out how to get the bloody drawers off. I don't think I did this only a few weeks ago. I've forgotten again. <laughs> so I think it's something to do with this little tab. Yeah, it was. Right, towel in under there. Isolate them flexes. Let's whip out the old tap. Sometimes you get lucky with taps and the whole bolt, bolt comes out. I'll put that there for now and if this new tap performs a lot better, we'll take the flexes out of this and blow down them and just see if there's any other blockages in it, but I doubt it. New ones in. Just got to put our flexes on now. You don't need to over tighten these just hand tight I found and then a little nip up because they're on a rubber let's get the water back on moment of truth is it going to be any better look at that loads better what are we getting Eight or nine litres a minute. Where we was getting three before. Ten on the cold. 
happy days. Customers going to be well pleased with that. Now, before I go, I'm just going to check if there's any other restrictions in the flexi or if it was just the tap that was at fault. That's the hot flexi out. <laughs> Nothing blocking that. You can't see it, but there's, a, there's hardly any path for the water to go through on the outlet of the tap. So no wonder it was terrible. Much better. On to the next one. So you might remember this from a few episodes ago, back here on this one, where at the time I said the um, well, turbine sensor, whatever you want to call it, was Hall Effect sensor. It was a bit crusty. Well, it's not giving hot water out anymore. I'm not recognising the demand. Carpet's done since last time. There you go. Not recognising a demand. So, I'm going to put it down to the fact that that was stuck in the off position. Power her off. We'll shut off this cold. That sounds like it's shut. Whip off the cover. So yeah, it's at the back here. They're a bit of a pig to get to. You've got to flick the sensor off first. Put my fingers on now. One sensor off. And I use that 18 mil ratchet spanner for this. Ring end of the spanner on there. So we're just gonna Well that didn't work, so we're gonna have to get a socket set on it because just can't get enough leverage on that spanner. Again, 18 mil. Drop it on the extension bar and a ratchet needed. But to do that I'm gonna whip out this gas pipe. There you go, loads more room to get onto it. Please don't have snapped. Oh, you beauty. Absolute beauty. Here's the new one. It's not a genuine part. They're about buddy 11 quid off eBay. But they do the job. Just checking that they're the same, and I'm going to just lube this up to aid putting it back together. Obviously, I'm going to replace the two three quarter fiber washers on this gas pipe. Make sure the grommet's gone back in to keep it a room sealed appliance. Beautiful. They're normally a nice little job, to be honest. The sensors on backseat Geotex does help if you remove the gas pipe like I did. Um, I replaced the washers, obviously. But that one was a pig. It's so much corrosion on it must have just made it tight. I was sure it was going to snap. And if it snaps, you need the full right-hand block, which is obviously costly for the customer, and I don't have them on the van. Thankfully, he didn't snap. Right, let's go on to the next one. Right, so with this next one we've been called out to is a musty smell in the kitchen and a dripping tap. Now, the customer noticed underneath the dishwasher here. I don't know, you see that reflecting there. It's soaking wet through. So something is leaking either on the dishwasher or underneath here, I've just stuck out that 
back panel to see if I can see anything, but you see the water. Everything's soaking wet through. However, everything on the trap side and stuff seems dry. Could be anything, could be the, the outlet pipe on the dishwasher split. Ah. Ah. Hmm. I'd say is that's the problem. E. Someone's either got this one as well, this cold water maze one, which is the one in my hand at the minute. Something's either got that as well, but that's got a that's only the outer sheave. I don't know if they've melted or. A rodent's been at it. But yeah, that's the that's the problem. It's my now so I'll try and sort out this tap. There's an isolation valve there on the cold. It's already stopped dripping, so that tells me it is the cold. I've got to try and part these taps and hope I've got something. Someone's had to go at these before, that's been glued back in. Hope I've got something in this box here to repair it. So I managed to get the tap cartridge out by undoing the chrome shroud. And I can access that nut. I just cannot remove this head. There's no point you even looking down there because you'll not be able to see. Looks like an Allen key. Tried every single size Allen key. Will not connect onto whatever the hell's down there. It's not a flat head. It's not a posy. It's not a... PZ2, whatever you want to call it, that head will not come off. None of, none of these undo off. I don't know how. I'm going to Google it before I go, but if not, this is going back in. Unfortunately. I got it. So basically, you undo the chrome cover. And it's just to hold on with a plastic grub thing. <laughs> so you undo the front cover, and I was tapping it up with a hammer on each of these. Just tapping it with the rubber side of the hammer and it pinged off. Now then hopefully I've got a cartridge that'll match this. And all this won't have been in vain. So hit the spline gauge and just see which one it's gonna be. Problem is it fits in quite a few so it fits in CC3, fits in CC4, fits in CC5, fits in CC16. But so that is a CC4. As you can see, it's not got the the outer threads on to screw the it's this one in it to screw the covers at the cover on. So that won't work. So this is the only one I think I'm going to be able to use. As I, I reckon it's probably a CC3, which I don't have. I've obviously used that and not replaced it. However, it's slightly shorter. Everything else is all right, other than the length of them splines. So I'm going to see if it'll work or not. Shame you can't just take out the discs and replace them. I don't think that works. I mean, it's gone on. Feels all right. Oh, only one way to find out. You better stop leaking. Right above that socket. I think it has stopped and only just weeped whilst I turned it, hopefully. <laughs> hmm. Seems to have worked anyway. Got to glue these back on. Customer said they fell off and he'd glued them back on, so. <laughs> I can't be held responsible for that. And with that, the customer said they had a mouse. The cat got it in the end, but the mouse did that before he left, which is very kind. I'm not. Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> you murderer. I'm not uh, 
but they're going to get the uh, they have an appliance engineer. He's going to come out and sort out either replacing the drain hose or replacing the actual dishwasher itself. I was only here to find the leak and sort the tap. Win win. Don't forget to glue them right back on the right way around. That would drive me insane if that cold was like finishing over here when it was off. Next one. So yeah, that there was no next one. There was no next one. The next one will be in the next video. So I don't know why I said next. Well, I was actually going to another job. That's why I said next. But it weren't worth filming. A lot of content isn't worth filming. And a lot of people will say to me, how do you find time to film? You, you, it does take longer. Granted, the longer you've been doing it, you find it easier. To, well, not easy, but you find it easy to film. And because you just get used to filming... But but it still it still does take longer, so I can't film every single job I do, and some of them are incredibly boring, and some of them have been on the channel before. So yeah, there was no next, but there will be next week. Catch you then.